Welcome to the Unraveling the Scriptures channel. What you are doing is not right Moses. You cannot do this alone. With these words, an individual addressed Moses, the great liberator of Israel. But who dared to speak to him in this manner? And with what authority did they do so? An enigmatic priest of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, although not an Israelite or Jew, served the Creator God of the heavens and the earth, the God of Noah and Shem. He was called Jethro. But who was Jethro Ruel, in truth? He was Moses' father-in-law. In this video, we will explore the origin and history of the character Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. Follow along with this content, the history and origin of Jethro, the priest of the Lord and Moses' father-in-law. The Bible is full of intriguing and enigmatic characters, and one of them is Jethro, Moses' father-in-law. Jethro was an inhabitant of the land of Midian. His name, in Hebrew, is pronounced Yitro, while in Arabic it is Shoaib. The name Ruel or Rajul was also associated with Jethro, and in Semitic Aramaic, he was called Ruel. Ruel was the name of Moses' father-in-law, Jethro, which carried the meaning of his excellence or his posterity. This title was attributed to Jethro due to his importance as a prominent priest in Midian. However, he was not a priest of pagan deities but rather a priest of the god of Shem, associated with the god of Abraham. As for Jethro's origin and lineage, he was connected to Abraham, although he was not an Israelite. He belonged to another people who also had ties to Abraham. This people were possibly the Midianites. Midian was one of the sons Abraham had with Keturah, his second wife. Keturah gave Abraham six sons, one of whom was named Midian, giving rise to the Midianite people, an Arabian tribe located in Saudi Arabia. In our next video, releasing on Thursday, we will delve into a special topic about Keturah, addressing the request of many of our subscribers on this channel. She had a significant relationship with Abraham and gave rise to significant peoples, including the Midianites. The Bible reports that besides Jethro being a descendant of Midian, which in turn traced back to Abraham's lineage, it also mentions that Jethro had another ancestry, being a Kenite. Therefore, in addition to his descent linked to Abraham through Midian, Jethro also had a Kenite origin. The Kenite constituted a Semitic group, originating from the Semitic lineage that traced back to Kadima. According to some sources, this lineage was associated with Ishmael, making the Kenite an Ishmaelite tribe. Others argue that the Kenite might have had their roots in the Aramean tribe, specifically a tribe from Sirius. The most plausible hypothesis is that Jethro's Kenite ancestry possibly originated from the tribe of Kadima, linked to the Ishmaelite lineage. The Kenite traced their descent back to Kadima, mainly because the renowned Ishmaelites had become significantly intertwined with the Midianites. In reality, they are grouped together in biblical genealogies. Jethro is recognized as a priest of Midian due to his role as a priest of the Most High God in the Midianite region. This clearly illustrates that there were other worshippers of the God of Abraham among the various lineages descending from Abraham. This was not limited to the lineage through Isaac but also included that which came from Midian, who was a legitimate son of Abraham with Keturah. It's worth noting that Jethro, interestingly, is also Moses' father-in-law. It was Jethro who gave his daughter Zipporah in marriage to Moses when Moses spent about 40 years in the region of Saudi Arabia, specifically in the land of Midian. The Bible reports that Jethro was the father of at least seven daughters. He also had at least one son named Hobab. A little-known curiosity about Jethro's life is that, although he was a man of Midianite and Kenite descent, his wife was not from the region of Saudi Arabia, nor did she have a Midianite or Semitic lineage. In fact, Jethro's wife was Cushite. Here's an interesting point, a Cushite woman had roots in ancient Nubia or Ethiopia. The term Cush in ancient Hebrew and also in Aramaic was used to refer to people with darker skin tones. The word Cush literally meant black or blackness. Therefore, 
Jethro's wife was a woman who came from the region of Ethiopia in Africa but settled in the Middle East, or possibly a Nubian woman, due to her ancestry tracing back to Cush. It's important to note that Cush is one of the sons of Ham, and Ham is considered the ancestor of African peoples. This observation is truly intriguing. The fact that Miriam referred to Moses' wife as a Cushite woman provides clear clues about her non-Semitic origin. This designation suggests that her Cushite ancestry was not linked to her paternal side, which was Semitic, but probably came from her maternal side, possibly from Ethiopia, Nubia, or another African region that migrated to the Middle East. Jethro played a crucial role as a mentor and instructor to Moses regarding celestial matters and the history of Semitic peoples. This was because Moses, having been raised in the Egyptian court and being unaware of the truth about the Israelites and his own ancestral heritage, needed this education. Jethro shared details about the Semitic lineage, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He conveyed to Moses all the knowledge he possessed about God. It's noteworthy and fascinating that a Midianite Ishmaelite was responsible for teaching an Israelite all the wisdom related to the God of his ancestor, Abraham. Moses spent approximately 40 years living and working in the land of Midian, alongside his father-in-law and wife, Zipporah. During this period, Moses had two sons with Zipporah, Gershom and Eliezer. The name Gershom, whose original form Gershom means, I am a stranger, or I have been a stranger, reflects Moses' experience as a foreigner in the land of Midian. The true name of Jethro, also known as Ruel or Rajul, originates from the Semitic languages and means, friend of God, or divine friend, pronounced as, Ruel. After the battle of Rephidim against the Amalekites, Jethro received news about the Israelites' liberation from the hands of the ancient Egyptians under Moses' leadership. He journeyed to the desert and met Moses on the mountain of God. Moses shared with Jethro all that had transpired. Exodus chapter 18, verses 9 to 12, describes how Jethro rejoiced at the good the Lord had done in freeing Israel from the hands of the ancient Egyptians. Furthermore, Jethro played a crucial role in advising Moses to delegate responsibilities, appointing judges to address minor issues in Israel. This allowed Moses to focus on leading and caring for the people. Jethro's wisdom and administrative skills were evident as he evaluated Moses' working system. Jethro listened as Moses explained his leadership structure and pointed out its deficiencies, warning him about the consequences. He advised Moses to establish an efficient leadership structure by appointing leaders to assist him. Jethro's authority was backed by his role as a priest of Midian. Humbly, Moses welcomed and implemented the counsel of this wise man. The synergy between them resulted in the well-being of God's people, reflecting the excellence of their actions. The legacy of Jethro, the wise leader and Moses' father-in-law, resonates through the centuries as an inspiring example of wisdom and discernment in leadership situations. His contribution to the history of the Israelites extended beyond being the father-in-law of one of the greatest biblical leaders, Moses, it was deeply rooted in his practical actions and advice. Jethro recognized the burden Moses faced in judging disputes and solving problems for a growing nation. At a critical moment, he offered advice that transcended the barriers of time, the importance of delegation. By advising Moses to appoint trustworthy leaders to assist in the governance of the people, Jethro not only lightened Moses' load but also established a timeless principle of effective management. This practical guidance from Jethro had a profound impact on the structure of the Israelite community. Creating a system of judges and leaders to handle everyday matters allowed Moses to focus on more complex issues and spiritual decisions. This organizational model demonstrated how shared leadership and efficient task distribution can lead to better outcomes for a collective. As we conclude this chapter of Jethro's journey, we remember that his lessons are timeless, and his influence endures as an example of how wisdom, practical advice, and faith can come together to shape the narrative of life. Thank you for staying with us until now, 
and feel free to suggest other biblical characters you'd be interested in seeing in this documentary-style format. See you soon.